Well, hello everyone. Welcome back to Adrian's Digital Basement. For today's video, we're going to continue the saga of the potentially fake SRAM chips. Let's get right to it. So if you haven't watched the last video where I kind of rant about some potentially fake SRAM chips, these ones here, uh, you should watch the last video. But on my bench today, we have a computer that's similar to the Tandy. It's the IBM PC Junior. I broke this out because Alan, the very nice man who sent me the Junior IDE board, which I put into this computer and featured in a video several videos ago, I'll put a link to it uh, in the description below. He emailed me and told me that the Junior IDE board that's in this computer now has two of the Alliance SRAM chips and they are good parts that he bought from DigiKey. And this thing obviously works fine. So there's two things we're gonna do here. We're gonna, well, there's probably more than two. We're gonna take a look at those SRAM chips, see how they look, at least visually compared to these ones, see if we can identify anything that maybe marks these as fake. But also, I can just try these chips. These are the four that don't work anymore in the Tandys, either of the Tandys. We'll try these inside of this machine, see what happens. And then what we'll do is we'll take the chips that are in here that are our known good chips, and we'll put that on the RAM board in the EX and the HX, and we'll see how that works. I got lots of comments on my last video with some tips and suggestions, so thank you very much for everyone who commented on that. I appreciate it. But here's the PC Junior, and it's working. I just plugged it in to make sure it's, it's working properly. I have it hooked up through composite. Alan told me that there are two chips on board, which of course means one megabyte total, which is more than this thing can address directly because of course it's reserved space for video memory and system ROM, stuff like that. But when we look at the boot screen, I'm using Junior Config and it recognizes 736K. When I reset the computer, the BIOS that's on the Junior ID also shows 736K. If I turn the machine off and on, excuse the black and white, I did this because otherwise you can't read the text in 80 columns mode, it will do a memory check of 640K. I'll probably replace one of the chips with one of the bad chip. We'll see if it counts up the memory properly. I am unaware of how to check high memory. All the memory test utilities I have only test the very first part of memory, like zero to 640K or zero to 736K. It won't let me test anything in the high memory areas. So if you know of a tool that can test the high memory upper memory blocks, Maybe you can specify what you want to test. I'd love to hear about that in the comments, so please let me know. By the way, I apologize for the noise. Uh, my furnace is running right now. It's autumn or fall in Portland right now. So it's a little bit cold and I just got home from work. So I turned on the heat to heat up the house. Anyhow, the Junior IDE is installed in this sidecar here. This is actually the Tecmar Junior Wave sidecar. So let's just pop this off the PC Junior. There it is, it came right off. Let's see if I remember how to get this thing apart. I think I have to do that like that. Oh, you know what? I think I have to take out these screws entirely. All right, so the mounting screws are off and there it is, it lifts right off. Oh, what a nice clean design this thing is. Okay, so there are the two Alliance chips. They're from 2018 and I gotta say they look quite a bit different. Let's put this one here on top. Yeah, wow, okay. So the Alliance writing on the top, now they are, this one has a date code supposedly from 2016, and that was 2018, but notice the Alliance logo. It's very fat and not very clear, and then that text on the top line is different. Now a viewer from Germany sent me a picture of one of his chips from 2011, and if you look at the picture here, the logo matches the logo on these genuine chips from 2018, but again, the font is different on the top line and the logo on the chip from China definitely looks clumsily printed. And then this definitely looks laser etched. So one thing I wanted to test is I wanted to see if the 99% alcohol actually takes off any of the printing that's on here, like if it's silk screen. Let's try rubbing it. Um, why is that coming off black? Um, <laughs> what the hell is that? 
that's not supposed to happen. This is just 99% alcohol. It's not some kind of a crazy solvent. And yeah, that that printing is definitely, it, it's almost like it's marred the surface of the chip and it took off almost all the printing. Let's just try that on the original chip. I'll use the other side of this cotton swab, the non-black side. Let's just try that on here. Yeah, that's not any color coming off. That's absolutely fine. And if you look at the chip still, if anything, it actually made the printing a little more clear than that one. It's a little whiter now. Meanwhile, on the one from China, there's a horrible smudge on the chip now and the logo is almost gone. So my confidence level is getting higher that these are definitely fake chips. Anyhow, let's put this back on the PC Junior and plug in some of these potentially fake chips, see what happens. So the top chip is labeled U1, so I'm gonna assume this is zero to 512K and U2 here is the 512K to 1024. So let's remove this top chip. I'll put a link in the description to this chip puller if you want to get your own, but this is a great little part here. It makes taking out chips really easy, especially when there's not a lot of room like in this board. And let's put one of these babies in. I didn't mention this on the last video. This is the one I just rubbed off some of the chip, but for some reason, one of the legs uh, just broke off on this chip. Not exactly sure what happened. I just found it lying on the bench. It, it wasn't bent or anything, but that's a little strange in and of itself. So we can't test this one, obviously. But luckily I have a bunch more we can try. So let's uh, let's try this one. Good chip on the bottom, potentially fake chip on the top. All right, let's power the machine up. Well, that's interesting. Uh, it counted up the memory and it seems to be working. So let's let the computer boot and see what happens. Well, all right, the machine is functioning seemingly normal. Now that chip might still be high memory. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna swap the other good chip uh, with one of the ones from China here. Maybe that's the lower part of the memory and see what happens. Of course, this machine has 128K built in. So that's part of that RAM check. That first 128K is coming from the internal memory. But the rest of the RAM on this board are mapped into the other parts of the memory map. All right, let's get this out. Let's pop in another one of these that I have an X on. Okay, both chips are in. Let's turn this on and see what happens. Yeah, well, seems to be working. So maybe this entire problem, again, goes back to my board design and has nothing to do with these chips. What I'm gonna do is let this thing boot into DOS and then I have a, a memory test actually from Tecmar. We'll run the Tecmar memory checker. It's a little DOS utility. Or actually, I think I should run Check It on here and see what Check It reports back. All right, I put some batteries in the keyboard and Check It is running. So this is interesting. Uh, maybe these chips are genuine and they're just weird ones where they rub off black. Oh, Check It seems like it froze, but I just remembered Check It is not compatible with the PC Junior. It doesn't support the keyboard routines. Ugh. All right, so this is the mem test utility. It's made by Tecmar, and it just seems to test all the memory. It's made for PC Juniors. It does work on regular machines as well. Let's see how this works. Well, the memory test absolutely worked fine on the PC Junior. So these two chips that weren't working in the Tandy work perfectly in the PC Junior? What the heck is going on? All right, well, I guess now it's time for me to take these known real chips and stick them in my board in the Tandy, see what happens. I did a little bit more rubbing on the chip and it's very odd, the, the logo is still visible and I cleaned it with water afterwards. It's just very smooth. I don't really get that. The original chip here has a little bit more of a texture to it. Something else that's interesting is if you look at the leads, the top chip is the one from China, how they kind of look shiny and soldered. 
real chip doesn't look like that. One thing I did notice is there are two circles on the bottom and actually on one of the two is some writing. Uh, it's kind of hard to see, but there's a couple letters and numbers on that one and they actually both have that and in the same position. Also the texture on the bottom of the chip is roughly the same. And if we take one of the chips where the top rubs off and let's rub the bottom, and look, nothing actually comes off on the bottom. So the bottom of the chip is definitely original, but it feels like the top has maybe been sanded down and then painted with black paint. And look, it just comes right off. If I've rubbed in the middle, but if I rub on the sides here, see it just immediately comes off. I don't even have to push hard to get that to happen. On the bench is the 1000HX, which I put back together. Inside and installed is currently the serial card and the original memory card. So if we turn that on, we get 640K. We'll just make sure it boots properly with no errors. Yep, boots up perfectly. Oh, peering inside, you can see the serial card, which is the OEM one as well. And incidentally, this has an LS245 octal bus transceiver right here. We take these cards out and we pull them apart. There's the OEM card and it also uses an LS 245 bus transceiver. I don't have one of those on my design and I felt it probably wasn't necessary But you know what both of these cards have it and they work and mine doesn't and that might be the thing that makes the difference So let's pop my card with the bird's nest into the machine See if this thing works or not this card and this SRAM chip works in the EX I had it in that machine because it was working in there, but we'll turn it on and see what happens it says 640k We're expecting to see those memory errors there they are, and it's exactly the same as it was the last time. My theory is, is that if there was a little bit of noise on the bus, say from the missing LS245 transceiver on the card, that these wouldn't be as consistent as what we're seeing there. They look the same every time, so if I turn the machine off and back on again, we will see that they're going to look, those errors will be exactly the same, same memory locations. There they are. It's the same, and I've taken pictures so I could compare. All right, so this is the big moment of truth, and I'm gonna pull out this car, this chip, and we're going to pop in. We're gonna put one of these original chips that was in the PC Junior in here, and let's just see what happens. All right, here it is, the smoke test. 640K. Well, look at that. The computer freaking boots. I can't, I can't even believe it, it's working. So those chips which work in the PC Junior don't seem to work in this, but it just booted. Okay, you know what, before I get too excited, let's put, check it in here and let's run a memory test because maybe that was just a little false hope. In fact, let me turn the computer off and turn it back on again. I, pulling out the little hair I have, trying to fix this problem, and it was marginal chips? Oh, it's booting. So, okay, check it. Let's run check it. Let's, I gotta do this methodically. Let's do check it. Oh, actually on this floppy, I have that same PC Junior mem test program. Let's try that out. See if that works first before we run check it. All right, I have the mem test directory on here. Let's see, mem test, there it is, mem test. Now one thing to consider, on the Tandy, it's gonna start, it says it has 640K, it's gonna start checking the memory. Now at the top of 640K is actually a shadow of the video memory. So at the end of this test, it's gonna corrupt the screen. But that's normal and that happens when we run the OEM card as well. Now, there's the screen corruption. That's absolutely normal. That's just what happens. It still is going to end and go to the DOS prompt, though, after this little thing. Yep, there we go. We're at the DOS prompt there. Okay, we're going to reboot. We're going to run check it now. I can't even believe this. It's just my mind is still reeling from the fact I spent so many hours troubleshooting and it's working. Ugh. Okay, here's the check it floppy. We run check it. Hit enter. 
And unlike the PC Junior, check it does work properly on the Tandy series. Check it out. Hit enter. We're about to run the memory test and check it. I have changed it from a quick test to a full test. And the other thing to notice is that it only shows 624K of memory, not 640. And that's of course because if you went up to 640, it would corrupt the video screen. The BIOS only reports 624K on the Tandy and check it responds to the BIOS and not what it actually physically sees in there. So let's hit enter and I'm gonna let this run and you're gonna watch it all. I'll just speed up the footage. Well, I'm not sure if the camera was recording or crashed or what happened there, but I came back downstairs and it was off. So anyways, the RAM check finished. All right, so with that chip working, let's put one of the China chips back in here and just see if it gets up to its old tricks again. One chip out. Okay, we'll put this chip back in here. Power it on. Yep. Right back to the old error messages now. By the way, this is a different chip. I put in one of the other ones. This was the one here that was working in the EX. So I grabbed a random chip and, you know, look, it's basically doing the same exact thing. In fact, the error messages seem identical. Let's take this China chip out and we'll put in the other good Alliance chip just, just to make sure that it wasn't a fluke that it worked with that one chip. Okay, there we go. Power on. Look at that. Look at that. So there we go. The two known original chips that came from DigiKey work perfectly on my board in the HX. Meanwhile, these China chips, even the ones that don't work in either of the Tandys, actually work fine in the PC Junior. So why would that be? I'm not quite sure. And then we have the fact that when I use 99% isopropyl alcohol, it rubs the black coating right off the top of this chip. So I guess I'm gonna order some more of these chips from DigiKey and I will put the original Alliance chips back into PC Junior and then I'll have some good ones on hand for when I build the proper RAM expansion board for these computers. I did put a refund request in with AliExpress to get my money back for these chips. And honestly, this is a lesson learned for me that I just need to start ordering locally instead of trying to save a few bucks by ordering from China. So if you like this video, I'd appreciate a thumbs up. And if you didn't, you know what to do, thumbs down. Please subscribe for more videos that are coming up in the future. Hit that little bell if you want to be notified about new videos when I post them. And thank you very much for watching. Goodbye.